Now, even with today's market action, the S&P 500 has rebounded nearly 20 percent off its December low. But our next guest believes they're not out of harm's way yet. David Stockman isn't backing away from his bear case for Wall Street in his new book, Peak Trump, The Undrainable Swamp and Fantasy of MAGA. David served as director of the Office of Management and Budget under President Reagan. He joins us by phone. David, a pleasure to have you on Futures Now. Help our audience understand what's the main reason you wrote this book. Well, uh, I think we hit peak Trump and peak market at 21, uh, 29.40 on the S&P back in September. I think that is the peak for a long time to come. And I think Trump foolishly embraced the stock market that he called one big, fat, ugly bubble at 2140 or 800 points lower back right before the election. He was right then, and he's made a huge freshman mistake uh, taking, uh, you know, credit for a bubble that's in its last days. My view is that, yes, uh, you know, the chart monkeys keep trading for nickels and dimes uh, on a day trade basis. That's fine. But if you're an investor with any kind of time horizon at all, it's, uh, it's all over except the shouting. We're at month 116 of this expansion. The, the record is 119, three months more in the 1990s. We've got headwinds coming from all over the world, and, and you can see it in the export data, in the European mm -hmm. economy, in the uh, tr big troubles going on in China. You can see it in our own data, which has been really weak. In fact, we're probably going to print a GDP of less than 1% in the first quarter. Last year was a sugar high. There's no Trump boom. We're near the end of this cycle. Recessions haven't been outlawed. They will, it will happen in the next year or two. Earnings will drop from 130 on a gap basis to 70 or 80. The market will take a huge hit. And there's just no risk reward for an investor who's thinking maybe a few months or quarters as opposed to a day trader who's thinking a few minutes. So, David, what are your, what's your take on the record budget deficit? And is that also a big risk to this market? I, I think it's a huge risk. I mean, it's actually crazy time that this market and Washington, both ends of the Excella corridor, are totally ignoring. We're in year 10 of an expansion. Trump has proposed four trillion of cumulative deficits in year 10 through year 14. If I can put it in graphic terms, that's month 123 to month 170 of what would be a business cycle expansion that's never happened before. If you factor in what he's proposed into that, um, even a mild recession sometime in the next four years, we're going to have two trillion annual deficits, and we're going to uh, go into a fiscal crisis in the 2020s when the entire baby boom is retiring and Social Security and Medicare are soaring that we won't come out of. That's the big elephant in the room. There is a, fin there is a fiscal calamity baked into the cake, this Trump budget. Uh, simply reinforces and underscores how bad it is, and it's being totally ignored because I assume uh, Wall Street uh, thinks the Fed will print the money if all else fails. I doubt whether they can uh, jump back into QT or QE in a multi-trillion basis again. David, David, it's Jim in Chicago, but feel free to call me Chart Monkey if you want. I can go by that as well. I do okay. have a question for you, though. On a serious note is that when you said Donald Trump called it a bubble back before the election and doesn't call it a bubble now, the fact that rates were zero then and the Fed was definitely without question pe putting people out the risk curve, pushing people out the risk curve, now rates are almost 3% around, around the curve. That doesn't give you any bit of encouragement at all. If rates were at 4% and the market was still rallying and the market wasn't falling apart, would that give you any encouragement? In other words, what would? Anything? Uh, yes, if uh, we had a house cleaning at the Fed. I mean, I think it's pathetic, this pivot that Powell, I call it, 
Powell's pusillanimous pivot. I mean, my gosh, they've got the uh, funds rate at 2.4 percent after 10 years when it was below the inflation rate. If you look at core inflation, it's still 2 percent, 2.2, barely positive. They got a balance sheet that's bloated at four trillion, and they're, uh, you know, talking about uh, quitting within a few months. Uh, so what that means is they started uh, on the eve of the crisis with 900 billion. They're going to quit with 3.6 trillion when they uh, finish the. Q- QT in September. That's you know that's monetizing two and a half trillion of debt. You think you could do that? Yes, I mean, but David, hold it though. But you're not. It doesn't seem like you're answering the question uh, completely though. What I'm saying is, if the other side of one, the administration, it seems from your rhetoric that you you clearly don't like Trump, and that's fine. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. But with his uh, agenda, the Fed felt emboldened to raise rates at least this way. In a, in an alternate universe, wouldn't have been worse if the Fed felt that that economic policy was too restrictive and couldn't raise rates at all? Uh, Well, I I think you're saying that by burying ourselves in debt with this calamitous fiscal policy this late in the cycle, that gave room for the Fed to tighten microscopically, then that's just a measure of the alternative universe we're in. We should be having almost no deficit at the top of a business cycle. We should have normalized years ago that the uh, balance sheet of the Fed should have been cut down by several trillion over the last three or four years. They did or delayed. And now, uh, you know, they're they're, uh, basically capitulating and throwing in the towel. We have a serious problem of unhinged central banking, and we have a Washington that has totally been euthanized by cheap, uh, you know, yields on the debt. And they pretend that you can borrow uh, $4 trillion at the top of a business cycle and, and live to tell about it. I think so they're David, all wrong. So, you David, highlighted, you've highlighted a number of larger risks, but the question is when does it start to hit the market? And how would you characterize the, the current state of the stock market in the Dow, the S&P 500, you know, slightly lower the past week, but still up double digits for the year? Well, double digits for the year, that's just an arbitrary starting point. The truth is it, is, it has been churning, uh, grinding for the last 14 months. We're now at this moment at 27.93. It crossed 27.93 January 5th, 2018, 14 months ago. Uh, so we had this uh, final, uh, you know, blow-off boom in September. Since then, it's attempted to penetrate uh, the 200 day five times, four times it failed. Now they're trying again. As I say, this is just day traders, chart monkeys, robo machines. This has nothing to do with rationality or investment, uh, you know, analysis on any uh, reasonable time uh, basis. And the idea that somehow there's going to be a China deal and that'll make everything better, I think, is laughable. There will be no China deal. There'll just be a deal to have a deal to have a deal with all kinds of uh, contingencies in it, enforcement mechanisms, fl- flyback uh, sanctions. Okay. You know, it, it, it's not going to happen. How could anybody right. believe right. this <laughs> after David. so many... Yeah. I appreciate you sharing your concerns with us and what you're looking and how you view the market. We're going to have to leave the conversation there, though. Thank you for joining us today, David Stockman, former OMB director.